I was yeah. saying Malcolm. <laughs> Welcome to Metal Rules TV, where the underground meets the playground. Malcolm. I'm Malcolm War Jamal Warner. <laughs> this is Jeff I'm Rappaport. Jeff Rapport. Were well, you introducing me again? I'm sorry. This is cursed. I'm Josh Williams. <laughs> I'm here, too. And that guy. Yeah, Brian Botley. Hey. Hey. <laughs> since things are going so well, why don't you, uh, let's get a guest on. Maybe that'll make things better. Yeah, I think I saw something laying around in the other room. We'll yeah. just go drag it something. in here Let's see what something. we can dig up. Yeah. I'm going to get up. Don't knock over my beer. Mmm. <laughs> That's good beer. <laughs> Yeah, that looks tough. <laughs> Jeff, you need to go to the gym more. <laughs> you got my belly fat! <laughs> How did I agree to this? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> this is not going to be pretty. You got one of these? Yeah, let's Why see. the heck did I agree to this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Man, I don't know it worked that hard for an interview. Uh oh, they're <laughs> panting. <laughs> oh, oh, I need to work that. <laughs> hey, Scott. So, uh, hey. Oh, hey, let me get closer. <laughs> oh. Say, hey. Hey, it's Mike Gorham of Tomorrow's Outlook and Without Worry and Autumn Silence. Silence. And Mike else? Gorham Band. In the uh, Mike uh, Bodine Sky, Bodine Sky. We did a project with the Bodine Sky as well. So there you go. Punches of power metal. That's all you need to know. That's it. Good job on the intro. Yeah, how did that feel? I'm wasted. I'm not going to do the <laughs> intro. How did it feel week. you? I don't know. I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you should start because... I feel like I went to the gym or something. I need a rest. Let's start with some serious pressing metal matters. Absolutely. I've known you for a long time, Mike. Can you tell me your, your fondest memory of Jeff Rappaport? Whoa. Wow. Fondest memory of Jeff Rappaport. Well, my fondest memories are uh, just you and I hanging out at the mall, listening to tunes. He used to carry around a boom box. No, I'm <laughs> On his shoulder? Dead serious. I kid you not. Was that little, guy? The silver boom box. He had all his Quiet Riots cassettes. <laughs> uh, what else did you listen to back then? Iron Maiden. Um... You name it, dude was all metal. The Supremes, the Supremes. Oh. Yeah, I did listen to a lot of Supremes. Oh, yeah. Supreme metal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Jeff was cool. a hardcore metalhead uh, long, long ago. But not anymore. Inspired a generation of metalheads. That I did. Now he's soft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just in the midsection. Oh. <laughs> now, uh, as a Facebook follower of you, I noticed that you you like to make a lot of doomsday predictions and. And wreak havoc upon the masses and scare the children. So I was wondering, uh, it doesn't seem like really seem like you. Is this like an alter ego of you? Oh, I guess you don't know me that well. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to have fun. Uh, you know, Facebook is an outlet, so to speak, um, where you can. You know, some people say you have to use it appropriately, and I think I, for the most part, do use it appropriately. But uh, yeah, I like to have a little fun. Create severe weather alerts when there's a snowstorm <laughs> coming. And, uh, yeah, there'll be like one flight again, and he's like, there's going to be 80 feet of snow. Kiss your loved ones goodbye. <laughs> it's a profit. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty dramatic. Yeah, it's good yeah. stuff. You've seen them, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're so you guys are fans? I'm a fan of We're Mike fans of your Facebook posts. Beautiful. <laughs> Friend Mike on Facebook and, and Phantom. <laughs> Phantom. <laughs> yeah, Phantom like this. Uh, right now you're talking about the Billy Zane movie. The Phantom. Yeah. Oh, he actually looks like Billy Zane now because they, they're both bald now. Him and Billy Zane. Looks just like easy. Bald. Yeah. Shaved head. I thought that's very sensitive. Which I think you have like the, the Billy Zane eyebrows. He's got like really, almost like Brian's, but much neater. <laughs> right. Brian's got some thick ass eyebrows. Yeah. They're masculine. There's no a couple caterpillars with, crawling yeah. on your head. There's nothing wrong with thick eyebrows. Well, you want to hear something interesting. Not actually hear something. See something interesting. Take a look at these eyebrows. <laughs> Half missing. Yeah, <laughs> they, look like, they look like two little hipster mustaches. <laughs> I think it's a bald curse. You know, the more as I lose my hair as time goes on, these start to go too. So take one down there, Photoshop down here, and you're like, I don't want to be on your show, Jew. <laughs> <laughs> and you can say that because you're because I am Jewish. Yeah, so you're, yeah. yeah. And I hit little. I'm <laughs> half part German. Yeah, so am I. I'm German too. That's why I hate you. But I'm German too. <laughs> That's your contradiction. 
You're like a juicy contradiction. Yeah, I am like juicy. Starburst. Yeah, <laughs> Starburst. <laughs> we just gave them money. Now you, yeah, you, now you. I think you're one of the greatest power metal singers out there. The question I have for you. <laughs> Come on, it's true. You and that, and that. My real question is, um, why aren't you doing anything more than tomorrow's outlook? Just got bunny ears. Yeah. <laughs> Outside of tomorrow's outlook, like why aren't you in a band? Why aren't you touring? Why aren't you out there? There's so many half-assed power metal bands. That you're so much better than these guys, so why aren't you doing anything? Um, Get out there and do well, it. Well, first of all, thanks for the compliment. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's a, that's a, honestly, it's a question I get asked uh, quite a bit. Why am I not doing something in a band? Why am I not touring or whatever it may be? Um, I, I guess there's a couple reasons. First, uh, first and foremost, uh, back in the day, and when I say the day, I'm talking late 80s, early 90s. Um, I, I took my shot, so to speak. Um, you know, we had, when I was in a band called Without Warning, we had some record showcases that we did. Um, didn't work out. Entertainment business is brutally cruel. Um, you know, I have a family now, two kids, wife, house, I have a really nice job. And for me to commit myself to the grind, because it really would be a grind, to try to grind it out and, you know, for lack of a better word, to make it, um, it would be an incredible, incredible risk. And at this stage of my life, you know, I'm 42, I'm just not ready to make that risk, make that commitment. What about something that came up about, though, where it was something that was, not, not like a new band, but it was like some established band like Judas Priest or, or Halloween or one of these <laughs> bands that you know you can go out and make a living on. Would you consider something like that if you had yes. the opportunity? Yeah. If you saw something like that, if I brought it to your attention and said, Hey, I just saw that Halloween's looking for a singer. Would you actually? Would you send them a, a video and, and pursue it? Would you? Are you the kind of guy that would go after that kind of thing, or kind of hope to fall in your lap? I'd have to know what the finances would be. You know, and that's really what it boils down to. I mean, my the way I look at it now. I mean, I love music. I love doing what I'm doing. Um, you know, financially, it would have to benefit me at this point in, in the game. If this was 20 years ago, I, I'd be all in, all in. I'd be. I'd, I'd probably be touring right now, doing something, going to Norway, hooking up with these guys. Tomorrow's Outlook that we're, uh, you know, that I'm, that I recently did a project with. But uh, it would everything would really fall on the, the finances of how much I would be able to earn, and I'd have to know what the, that was. So you don't think you could do a tour just singing the Metal Rules theme song? You don't think that's enough? Yeah, well, that's possible. But again, it's going to fall down to the finances. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know, just doing. Uh, just doing some regular touring here and there, yeah, that's absolutely within the realm of possibility. But giving my all, hundred percent dedication to a band to to tour and to make it, a, I'd have to absolutely, in my heart, believe that that band was going to go somewhere and make something happen special. Um, and then again, again, it's going to come down to the finances. So. Now, you went back, you're talking about Tomorrow's Outlook. Now, this is a project that was four years in the making, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, what took so damn long? <laughs> <laughs> Why? It, it, it's kind of unique, though. It's, it's Very unique. Yeah, but... Two guys, mainly in Nor Norway. I was going to say Norwegians. But Norwegians in Norway, that's yeah. where they are, right? They, they yeah. kind of put this together, and then they find vocalists yeah. for uh, a handful of songs. Right? It's you, Ski of Deadly Blessing, yep. Graham Bonnet of... Rainbow and Alcatraz, Alcatraz, Alcatraz yeah. yeah, and uh, Michael Kiss from Halloween actually uh, had a cameo appearance on that as well. Um, did a phenomenal job with uh, the last track on the CD. So, uh, and then there's a uh, Mr. Oliva as well. All oh, right. So, um, and that's two and a half years ago. I was actually approached by Ski from Deadly Blessing who asked me to to sing on this CD and. You know, I, I said, yeah, sure, why not? And I, I wasn't doing anything musically. I still sang, I still kept the, the vocals in shape, and did the song Doubt, which I believe is the, the sixth track on that CD. And my Norwegian uh, you know, brethren, they, they thought it was really good, so they asked me to do a few more songs. So I wound up doing a total of four. It would have been five, but um, the, the direction that I took on the fifth song didn't fall in line with their vision, so they 
decided to have Ski do it. So, yeah. nice. So this album is out now. Available uh, it's, in some places. What's, yeah, what's it's supposed to be available in a few weeks. It's supposed uh, to be <laughs> supposed to be available in a few weeks. Um, we'll see. I mean, it's. I mean, not we'll see. It will be available in okay. a few weeks. Is it gonna have U.S. distribution worldwide? Worldwide, nice. It's yeah. Battleground, is Battle God, the, Battle Gods, Battle, Battle God Productions, made. and uh, from the way I understand it, they're the largest uh, metal label in Australia. So good day. Yeah. So I mean, the cool thing about this CD for me personally. I can actually scratch, literally scratch two things off my bucket list. Um, one was able to be a part of a CD that's being distributed worldwide. Pretty being, awesome. Yeah, it's 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 really cool. And then two, and I think you know, I don't think a lot of people can actually say this, which is I'm really honored and proud to say this. One of the singers that I idolized growing up, uh, Michael Kisk, uh, ex Halloween singer. He uh, he actually did. The reprise. It's the last song on the CD of a song that I wrote, and I, you know, I did the vocal arrangements. Not musically, I didn't write it, but the vocal arrangements, the melodies. Uh, he actually did that song. So, for lack of better words, kind of he covered my tune. <laughs> yeah, that's so, pretty cool. And, and just being a part of that, and having him on the same CD with me, of someone that I idolized growing up uh, as a singer and respected a lot, um, that is so cool. That is really cool. So I really, I really dig that. Awesome. Yeah. I think that we, why wasn't Tron? Isn't there just one of the guys come here and do a show in New Jersey, make a one stop? You and Skeeter are already here. You guys should do it once. We most of the CD. we could promote the crap out of it. Could be official metal rules event. <laughs> That's true. Finances, I'm sure. <laughs> well, we should talk to them about doing that. The, the two guys down here, they could, they could use somebody else's equipment. Uh, listen, know? man, if I'm going to make it happen. Do it. You do it. I'm going to put the shit. To, I'm putting this shit together. Norway and New Jersey. I'm even going to get Michael Kisk and Graham Bound to come. Man, the whole crew. The whole <laughs> right. crew. You're fronting the bill, right? You're paying for all the front <laughs> They can stay here, though. Oh, well, they can nice. all sleep here. Free room and board. Yeah, free room and board. <laughs> and an appearance on Metal Rules TV. Yeah. Ooh, the, the, ultimate, ultimate, the ultimate cherry. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you feel like Paramount hasn't really taken hold in this country like it does in Europe? Wow. It, it's almost wow. like singing and metal, you have to apologize for it in this country. Like, It's corny if you sing. <laughs> Almost. That's almost the opinion. Um, well, to answer your first question, I, I, honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know why it, didn't, it hasn't taken uh, a bigger step forward in this country. Luckily, for those who enjoy power metal, um, it did take a step forward over in Europe. Yeah. And it's huge over in the European right. countries. I mean, it's it's huge. Um over here, you know, we're blessed with uh, you know, the pop rock that we get and, <laughs> and all the other glorious stuff that we're that's forced down our throats on the radio. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't is, know why. You know, a lot of people who don't listen to metal, the complaint I hear all the time is they don't like the screaming. Right. But there's all this singing metal, and like nobody listens they don't to that. Know about like, it, they don't, right. Yeah, it's like, well, here you go. Here's, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, I think the same can be said too. Um, about progressive metal, I mean, you know, you listen to a lot of progressive metal bands. Uh, you have incredible musicianship, like Dream Theater. <laughs> it's like <Jeff's> favorite. <laughs> Jeff, you love Dream Theater. Tell us about Dream Theater. Maybe you heard me talk about it earlier on a radio show. <laughs> no, but there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of progressive metal bands that that have great singers, and they're just they're not going anywhere over here. And well, Dream Theater actually is popular. Well, no, though. you're right. You're right. And, uh, yeah, they Dream do. Theaters. They do have their own following, their own crowd. There's a lot of nerds that are really into them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. but it's not. It's not pop top forty. And, and I, I think. Well, it's they have two and a half million likes on Facebook. That's yeah, yeah, no, Dream Theater is definitely. A lot of likes. Oh yeah, they're definitely the uh, we have sex. The leaders. <laughs> sex. <laughs> Dream Theater is definitely the leaders in the progressive metal uh, sure. genre, but. Um, you have a lot of the copycats and those who want to be like Dream Theater or even kind of create their own sound, but it just doesn't take take hold over here as much as I personally would like it to, but I don't know. Uh, I don't have an answer. So dealing with uh, the people from Norway, did you get to learn any Norwegian language? Yeah, not a lick. Like curses, <laughs> nothing? Not, no. not a lick. I was actually going to do some homework tonight and come up with some Norwegian sayings, but yeah. I wouldn't know how to translate it. I could read it probably, but I might might be reading it incorrectly.
Exactly. So you guys communicate mostly through like email and stuff, or, or yeah, yeah, text talk messaging. Talk to them and all that? Yeah, you're talking on the phone before. I never have. Um, I actually text message a lot with Tron, um, who's uh, you know he really had the vision for the Tomorrow's Outlook. I love his movie. Yeah. <laughs> Tron. No. Oh. That's, a, that's a different Tron. Oh, it is. <laughs> um, now Tron, Tron is a extremely fluent textually. Nice. Um, and nice via tool. email, but uh, I've never heard him speak a lick of English or Norwegian. And I asked him if he was good at that, and he said he he's, has a real hard time speaking and actually, I think, understanding the English language, but you would never get that via the text. Right mm -hmm. now, I'd like you to do your best, what you think Tron sounds like voice. <laughs> Even though you've never yeah, heard it. Yeah, you've never heard it and you have no idea. I want you to look at the camera <laughs> and be Tron. All right, no offense, Tron. This is just something off the top of my head. Um, Do it in his accent and everything. In his accent, but an English accent. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know Norwegian. <laughs> I don't know if he's squeaky or high-pitched or, or if he's got a deep voice. I want you to just picture what you think his voice sounds like and see how close to the truth it is. Oh, how are you, Mike? <laughs> uh, welcome to our show. It almost sounds like uh, <laughs> Sasha <laughs> Cohen, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Nah, Kazakhstan, that wherever that is. Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Yeah, Kazakhstan. Nah. Yeah, that's my best. Okay. Not an impressionist. That's not bad. You let us know if it's good. Uh, do you miss the old days of pen pals? Pen pals. <laughs> Remember pen the pals. old days? You used to you ever have a pen pal back in the day? Hmm. I don't think I have, actually. <laughs> no? You had one, Josh? You no. Pen pen pen? Never had a pen pal. In school when they made you have a pen pal. Yeah, what was your pen pal's name? I don't know. I like remember that we, prisoner seven, four, we traded eight. Nintendo cartridges at one point, and that was awesome. Aww. Yeah. Did you just write letters with little hearts? It was hearts? a big deal. Yeah. Did you seal your letters with a kiss? Swat. No, I traded my... <laughs> he gave me Rygar in return for Castlevania 2. Whoa, those are epic That's games. That's a big deal there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. All the kids were excited. Yeah. Do, you like, do you like spicy celery? <laughs> I do. What? I do like what spicy celery. What is spicy celery? celery? Yeah, I like celery for hot sauce on it. I was thinking about the other day. It might be a good combination. I'm a big hot sauce fan, actually. Do you? Oh, oh no. Oh. You shouldn't say that in this house. <laughs> Someone's yeah. going to take a hot sauce challenge tonight. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it depends if I'm into that. But I actually... I oh, really... you're into it now. You <laughs> I guess I'm into for it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for opening that door. <laughs> Look for the hot sauce challenge if you don't hear it. Mike See will it. never sing again. Yes. <laughs> And I guess the, uh, the most important question is, um, are you honored to appear on Metal Rules TV, and why? I'm, not, I'm absolutely honored. Uh, you know, you've been one of the uh, closest friends of mine for so many years. Uh, you're a beautiful person inside and out. Um, you know, the fact that we hang maybe once every ten years, it's okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but, uh, no, I appreciate it. I appreciate you thinking of me. I appreciate your... Uh, Plug in the band, plug in, uh, plug in me. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. It is true, though. Oh, oh boy. Um, <laughs> no, but I appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, tomorrow's outlook. Uh, make sure you buy the CD. And, uh, yeah, talk about me. Do you remember when we went in Denny's that one time with with Pete and we, like, threw all those... Pete Levesque? Yeah, we threw all those paper towels on... Uh, uh, we, were, we covered the bathroom in paper towels... Was that me? Yeah. We went in the back. Nothing that's you can remember. Statue of the Alright. Time's up. Well, wait. Where, oh, where yeah, can tomorrow. we find out info for, for tomorrow's outlook? We're, not at Denny's. Is there a website? Not at Denny's. No, no, no. <laughs> Official website? Any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, tomorrowsoutlook.com. Um, you can look me up on YouTube. Uh, Boxbox2000 is my profile name. I'll have some... Some videos of some of the songs I did in the past, uh, some of the more current ones as well. What's your most famous song you did? Metal Rules TV song? Uh, the, uh, what's the most famous Metal Rules TV theme song I ever done? Yeah, uh, that's right. It's that. That's the one. Yeah, Mike did our Metal Rules theme song. That's His vocals on our Metal Rules theme song. Yeah. So, the song again, you hear all the time. The man's, man's been hooking me up and steering me into the direction of metal for so many years. I'm on it. Give me a kiss. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and scene.